Good day, everyone. Ali is here from Safi Financial Network. Today is July 18, 2023. Here is another daily analysis. Uh, so we had another uptick today. Pretty nice uh, move to the upside. So uh, volume was not that bad. 80 million for SPY, which is S&P 500 ETF. And market just uh, surprisingly going higher and higher. And everyone just uh, putting... Um, not everyone, like uh, lots of short sellers, uh, they're just squeezed and uh, lots of people are happy. So it depends which side you are. But uh, if you're long, obviously you should be happy if you're short. So you will be bloody and whiny. So market just had a nice uptick and uh, it's just kind of like overstretched, overbought. Anyway, if you want to slice it and dice it. So it's just a getting distance from this area. We are getting close above a 45, 53. So if you remember, we were talking about this level, which is 45.30. And right now we are just getting close above this. So we need to hold above this based on weekly uh, weekly basis. So if we close and hold above 45.30 in a weekly basis, then we should see market just getting into another bullish momentum to the upside. And probably I should say, new all-time high will be available for S&P 500 down the road or at least double top. But uh, right now, we just need to keep an eye 45.30. So that's going to be your threshold. That's my threshold as well. So just to keep an eye on that. Also, if you see something like probably sharp corrective move to the downside, you shouldn't be worried. I'm not worried until I see a sharp decline below 42.21. So this is the level that I'm just expecting market just uh, getting after that market is getting to the crash. But right now market just uh, poising up pretty nicely. So any pullback could be a buying opportunity for the next leg up. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But right now market just uh, moving higher and higher and we will give market benefit of doubt. If you just follow my my channel or if you just follow my analysis if you're my subscriber we are not in a short position so definitely myself and my subscribe subscribers they are not in short position we are not shorting the market just because it's kind of like a uh, financial suicide against your portfolio if you're just uh, doing a short just because you think that market is overbought market is stretched overbought can be more overbought stretched can be more stretched so just to keep the momentum in your portfolio and just to take it, take the uh, take the market, uh, give the market benefit of doubt and take the benefit from this momentum. Uh, this momentum can be one of the hated one, I should say, during uh, during this uh, bear market. I just want to show you something pretty interesting. So this is a weekly chart or let's say monthly chart. So this is a monthly chart, and last year was very, very bloody, like everyone uh, just getting into the bear side. But at the same time, when we got into this um, uh, m this uh, bullish consolidation, I told you um, the next month, if we close above SMA 20, we should see coming back to the bull market. And when we are above SMA 20, again, when we are just as simple as that, when we are above SMA 20, this is a SMA 20, even this COVID crash, we just get one month below and then next month flip flop to the upside. And then the third month we will have follow through after that, look the momentum. So the momentum is very, very rising. Everyone just uh, stay in this mentality, stay in this mentality that we are getting into the burst side. Sure, you can get to the burst side when again, we get close below a SMA 20. But as long as we are above SMA 20, which is 42,200 or 42,20, that would be the level that everyone needs to watch. And right now we are just getting into this supply area. If we hold and probably consolidates, we are going to go like higher and probably all time high 4,800. That's going to be on the plate. So don't short the market. And uh, probably this can just uh, stretch out more upside. Still, RSI is not into a good resistance. So probably we will see here, and then we can see this is going to be a uh -oh moment. So still, we have got the time to get there. So probably uh, uh, in 2024, 
we will get to the recession or something like that. So any pullback, again, would be a buying opportunity until we are above this um, 4220, we should be fine. So any decline below 4220, we should be boarded right now. We will give market benefit of that and we keep the momentum in our portfolio as well. Moving on to NASDAQ, which was kind of like interesting just because NASDAQ was negative uh, early session, as you see here, this shadow, but Microsoft helped the NASDAQ and technology just roaring again for another high. So this is nice um, high as well. So this is a higher high. Uh, higher low, higher high. And right now, NASDAQ is just keeping the momentum to the upside. There is still small divergence between this MACD and also uh, RSI as well. So uh, we just uh, keep the market uh, benefit of doubt uh, for this momentum. But again, keep an eye on this because if this one cannot um, fade at the RSI like S&P 500, that could be problematic. And any sharp sell-off, I should say sharp sell-off, could be a buying opportunity uh, as long as we are above again this level and this level which is 13,500 to 14,000 so that's going to be pretty interesting even if it uh, goes down to 15,114 so I should say that's going to be a previous breakout just a testing for another rally to the upside but right now we are just getting into this gigantic topping formation in early 2022, um, and that would be kind of like uh, interesting to see how market is gonna react. But right now we just uh, keep all those positions. We are not adding any to our portfolio right now, just because uh, lots of uh, stocks are getting into euphoria mode. But right now we just keep hold our positions and we are just uh, taking benefit of the market. US 30, look at that. So this is the way that we want. And we just want this to have a breakout to the upside. Fantastic move for the US 30. And to be honest, if you just follow my analysis, I'm kind of long in US 30 um, stocks. And right now I'm just taking the benefit of this. So this is a nice pattern. Anyway, if you want to slice it and dice it, this is a very, very nice pattern to the upside. And we can see US 30, which is the Dow Jones, could hit new all-time high this year. I know it's going to be a harsh call, but we call this beginning of this year. And I just told you in my forecast for 2023, which was lots of surprises happening because I didn't, I didn't think, to be honest, NASDAQ and S&P uh, had this performance. But I still, um, just on my call, that uh, we nailed it for the US 30, and US 30 can hit new all-time high this year and still that's going to be a possibility right now we are just getting into this pivotal point so we just break above this break above this and right now we can just have a like a back test to another move to the upside so we will see how it goes for now and uh just to uh, keep the market again um as is in your portfolio don't try to short or fight against the market because this market is very very resilient right now the momentum is shifting to US 30 and some defensive names, defensive predictable names. And right now we are just forming a very, very nice bullish momentum. And this one just triggered another one to the upside, possible double top or new all-time high is coming for US 30. So we will see how it goes. Uh, moving on to individual names, starting with yield. Yield just had a positive day. It was kind of like interesting to see yield form up very well. So because right now it's just forming small bullish consolidation, probably that's going to be A, B, C down. And within this B wave to the upside, probably we will see another like this and then coming down sharply. So uh, if you see yield is just jumping up, don't be surprised. I think it's going to be just a 4.90% and then coming down sharply after that. So I'm kind of like uh, on my call that that was a top and it was just the nailing stop hunting, something like this, but this is very, very nice reversal pattern. When you go above this top and then sharply coming back down and just uh, closing below this ending diagonal as well. So this is kind of like a nice TLT, just that the performance nicely to the upside. 
So TLT just jump up, Doji bar, just hitting SMA 20. If it recaptures SMA 20, I should say that's going to be interesting just because SMA 20 and SMA 200, they're pretty close to each other. Like TLT treasuries doesn't move anyway. So this is kind of like a forming this, but if we get above this, that could be very, very nice um, pattern to the upside. 108 can be available at this time. So we'll see how it goes. We need to close above 103, 104 ideally. Gold, substantial move to the upside, pretty nicely forming the way that we expect that. So this is not drawn yesterday or last week. This is just drawn. Uh, I know that I've got adjustment there, but this is the pattern that I was looking for still. If you see some pullback here, that could be kind of like a reverse head and shoulder to the upside. A possible scenario could be a uh, buying opportunity for, for new all-time high. I'm just looking for this happening in August period. So don't be surprised even if gold just getting up and then coming down and then QM pattern forms or reverse head and shoulder. But I'm just looking for a small pullback and it's coming along with the TLT because we're expecting from the chart TLT goes up and there is a spike, just a small spike. And probably that gives corrective move to gold to the downside. And that forms another bottoming scenario for the next hike. And next hike could be very, very aggressive. I'm just telling you, September, October, November could be very, very spiky and bullish for gold. Crude just nicely going back up again. So crude just had like a two days corrective move today, just getting back up. And the good thing for crude is that crude stocks, like energy stocks, they were positive. They were pretty nice positive. So we will get to those ones as well in this video. But crude needs to, um, well, we will have inventory tomorrow. And uh, if we get above this pivotal point, previous pivotal point, I think we can easily, easily tackle to 78.95 and then going up to 84. So we will see how it goes. But right now, through just forming a nice momentum to the upside. And it's not surprising to us. Actually, it's surprising for me why it just has so much delay. But eventually, it's going to happen. This is a very, very nice bottoming formation. And this bottoming formation can give crude spike to, again, $100 per barrel. We will see how it goes. Vixi, VIX coming down again today. So it's just forming a bearish consolidation and probably will see a lower low, and that could be very, very interesting. No one is in pay, no one is paying attention to this. Lots of people just trap on this because everyone just going long and they can't make money because options are getting worthless, expired worthless, because it doesn't move at all. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Dixie, this one just forming a bearish consolidation. So this is very, very interesting to see if this bearish consolidation you know what I'm talking about? So we are just prior this demand area forming a bearish consolidation, probably another sharp decline to this area. So this demand could be 97, 98, but that sharp decline can be bowed back very, very sharply as well. So it can just hit another 100 and then coming down. But overall, I'm kind of like a bearish for the US dollar. So US dollar can form a very, very, a volatile zigzag moment, especially when we have a Federal Reserve meeting next week. So we'll see how it goes. Moving on to technology stocks, uh, starting with Magma. Uh, Magma just uh, with Microsoft emit uh, this index just sharply to the upside. So still in this pivotal point, but if we get above this, that could be new all-time high. So we'll see how it goes. Still, technology has nice momentum to the upside. So we will see how it goes. Uh, moving on to Apple. Apple just uh, moving higher today. Uh, just a slightly doji bar, just a, a pause, to, sorry, just a pause today, not moving higher. Just a 26 down, nothing spectacular for Apple. Just a, just as I said, it's kind of like it needs to have more consolidation. So earning is coming next week, so more consolidation can be very, very interesting. Amazon today, just a 73 cents down. Not bad, not good, just a doji bar forming a kind of like a pullback for the next leg higher, probably. Meta, just a dollar 48 cents to the upside. Microsoft, nice surge to the upside. Sellers to control just their uh, latter of the session, but Microsoft, new all time high, like at 365, the way that uh, we're expecting this one. 
and uh, nicely coming down. But uh, there is no doubt about it. This is very, very fantastic stock. Anyway, if you want to slice it in, I said this is a very, very good one. So Microsoft just leading the technology right now. Previously, what was Apple? Right now, Microsoft. Google, just another hiccup today, 89 cents. The downside, nothing bad, nothing good. Netflix, just surging to the upside. Tomorrow, we will have Netflix earning. Seems like everyone is positive with this. So we'll see how it goes. Remember, earning coming down, earning possibly going up or another smash down to here. So we'll see how it goes, but seems like a lots of optimism in the market for the earnings and this can go higher. If it goes higher, just keep an eye on this level because this level, which is coming to 560, that could be kind of like a gap and the sharp sell off is happening. Lots of sellers are there. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but that could be interesting to see how market is going to react. Tesla, another move to the upside, $2.96 to the upside. Another bad price action Tesla is getting here. Tesla will have earning tomorrow as well. So that's going to be a gap down or up. We'll see how it goes. Semiconductor index, pretty mixed session. SMH goes up. Um, not a new all-time high, but just test uh, all-time high. Stocks, the same price action, going higher. TSM down, TSM just a $1.64 down. AMD was down, like a 39 cents down, but Nvidia was positive. So Nvidia just challenging again, new all time high. So we'll see how it goes. So that's why I'm saying it's kind of like very, very mixed session for the semiconductors. When they're weak, market is weak. When they're strong, market is strong. Texas instrument, not a bad candle, but lamb research coming down, like a $4.13 to the downside. So we'll see how it goes. Rocket star for today and also for Dow Jones was XLF, which is a financial spider. They're just going higher and higher as we were bullish in this sector, pretty nicely going up. So we had a nice good earning for the financials. Morgan Stanley just beat the earnings. JP Morgan beat the earnings. And lots of good banks actually beat the earnings as well. Tomorrow we will have Goldman Sachs. So we will see how it goes. But KBE, just a $40 could be the first level. $42 to $43 could be the third to second and third place as well. KRE, this one, just to getting into this white range bar. Pretty nice pattern just triggered. Here is reverse head and shoulder to the upside. And nicely, it can go higher. This is going to be $50. So we'll see how it goes. JPM. 28 cents to the upside. Goldman Sachs, just a $10, seven cents to the upside. And uh, Goldman, just uh, again, lots of people are positive for the earning. This is a not bad price action, I should say. This is kind of like informing a very, very nice bullish consolidation, if you ask me. So we need to get close above 345. If you get close above this, easy, it can go to this double top can go stretch exactly the same scale like a pole here. So 375, that could be the scenario for J Goldman Sachs. Bank of America nicely triggered to the upside. 31, 32, and 33 could be the scenario. Wells Fargo nicely again going up. $45, $45.60. And that was kind of like interesting because Wells Fargo just hit this supply area, the one that I mentioned here, with one candle, but two candles after that. This means there, there are no sellers here, so probably we can delete this one or we can use this one as a next. So this is going to be next demand area right now. So we'll see how it goes because this is a nice uh, reversal happening with Wells Fargo. If we get below this level right now, this could be into trouble, but right now this is going to be a buying opportunity if we get there. So that's that's all about this. That's all about the chart reading and also about the fundamentals as well. Moving on to the gold miners, which are performing very, very well. GDX, just a 67 cents to the upside. They're very, very positive. I'm very, very bullish in this sector. Um, I know that I'm just telling you a lot about this since the beginning of this year, but when this one is start out performing the market, it's going to be very, very sharp move to the upside. So we'll see how it goes. GDXJ, $2.85 to the upside. AEM, $1.21 to the upside. Nicely, NEM, $0.36. Cents. This is just a forming a small bullish consolidation here. And that can tackle to $48 to $50. So we'll see how it goes. 
Franco Nevada, $2.18 to the upside. Gold Barrick, just uh, $0.29 cents to the upside. All of them actually forming very, very nice bullish momentum. So we'll see how it goes. Moving on to the energy sector, $0.82 cents XLE just uh, needs to close above this. Then we can just see another uh, forming, a bullish forming to the upside. XOP oil and gas exploration ETF. This one just hit SMA 200. If you get close above this, I should say we are just tackling again this level. So 180, 148, sorry, 148. That coming to the plate. ORH, nice surge to the upside. New all time high? No, not yet, but it's pretty close. So we are just at the beginning of this bullish consolidation. So we'll see how it goes. Exxon just 46 cents down. This is not a good start for now. Chevron as well. So 31 cents. Oxy. This one better, and uh, 79 cents to the upside, not a bad. Earlier was better, but uh, just the latter session is coming down. So if we just uh, continue this, if we can see 62.88 and 64 above this, that could trigger to the upside to here to 76, 74 to 76. So we'll see how it goes. Rig, just a nice search to the upside, exactly hit the target. So $8.79. If you remember, I was talking about 8.80. So just one cent off and a nicely rejected down. So again, pull back to this level could be kind of like a buying opportunity for the next leg up. I'm kind of like a bullish on this $12 stock uh, for uh, for some reason. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I think I covered everything. If you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe to our channel and have a good month. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.